नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग प्रैक्टिस कोर्स इन दिस वीडियो विल स्टडी हाउ एस के लर्न सपोर्ट्स मल्टी लर्निंग क्लासिफिकेशन सेटअप इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी स्टडी डिफरेंट क्लासिफायर्स दैट आर सपोर्टेड बाय एस के लर्न इन दिस वीडियो विल एक्सटेंड दिस क्लासिफायर्स टू मल्टी लर्निंग सेटिंग्स देर आर थ्री डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ सेटअप्स इन मल्टी लर्निंग सेटिंग्स The first one is multi-class classification. It has exactly one output label, and the total number of labels is greater than two. For more than one output, there are two types of classification model: multi-label and multi-output. In multi-label, the total number of labels is equal to two, and there are more than one label. For example, in multi-class multi-output, we have more than one. output label for example and the total number of labels is greater than 2 so only difference here is the number of labels here it is 2 here it is greater than 2 so we refer to both these models as multi label classification here remember that the number of output labels per samples is greater than 1 so multi class multi label and multi output problems are referred to as multi learning problems sk learn provides a bunch of meta estimators which extend the functionalities of base estimator to support multi learning problems the meta estimators transform the multi learning problem into a set of simple problems and fit one estimator per problem so we have primarily two type of problems multi class classify classification and multi label classification and there are meta estimators for each of these problem types so in case of multi class classification we have three meta estimator one versus stress classifier one versus one classifier and output code classifier we'll focus on first two meta estimators in this uh, in this video which is one versus risk classifier and one versus one classifier in multi label classification we have two meta estimator multi output classifier and classification or and classifier chain so many sk learn estimators have built in support for multi learning problems meta estimators are not needed for such estimators however meta estimator still can be used in case we want to use these best estimator with strategies beyond the ones that are already built in some escalon estimators are inherently multi class the other ones implement one versus one or one versus stress strategies and there are also multi label escalon estimators so logistic regression with multi class equal to multinomial is an uh, inherently multi class estimator in the same manner logistic regression cv also supports multi class by setting the multi class parameter to multi multinomial rich classifier and its counterpart rich classifier cv are also inherently multi class So logistic regression can also implement multi class using one versus the rest strategy so for that we set multi underscore class argument to ovr hdd classifier and perceptron also uses one versus stress strategy to implement multi class uh, classification rich classifier on the other hand is inherently multi label uh, estimator first we will study multi class apis in sklearn so as you know multi class classification is the classification task with more than two classes each example is labeled with exactly one class For example, in Iris dataset, there are three labels: Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. 
Each example has exactly one label out of these three available class label. Hence, Iris dataset is an instance of a multi-class classification problem. In the same manner, in MNIST digit recognition dataset, there are 10 class labels 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So here the idea is to look at the image of a digit and recognize what is the digit present in the image. So each example has exactly one label out of 10 available class labels. Hence, MNIST digit recognition is also an instance of a multi-class classification problem. Let's look at how to represent class labels in multi-class setup. Each example is marked with a single label out of k labels. The shape of the label vector is, is n. So what we do is we use label binarizer transformation to convert the class label into the multi-class format. So we simply use a label binarizer transformation from sklearn.preprocessing and we call fit underscore transform with uh, by, by supplying the, the available label vector. And label binarizer returns uh, a label vector with shape n comma k where n is the number of examples and k is the number of classes. So in this case, since there are three, di three distinct labels, apple, pear, and orange, so you can see that there are three different labels that are created. So the first label corresponds to apple, second one corresponds to orange, and the third one corresponds to pear. So you can see that apple is present in the first and third example, that's why the the encoding here is 100 and 100. Orange is present in the last example, so that's why it's 0, 1, 0. And pair is present in the, in the second example, hence it is 0, 0, 1. So let's say you are given labels as part of the training set. How do we check if they are suitable for multi-class classification? So for that, we use type underscore of underscore target to determine the type of the label. So type of target is present in sklearn.utils.multiclass library. So we simply supply the label matrix or the label input to type of target and it tells us what exactly is the type of target. So in this case, where the vector has more than two discrete values, type of target returns multi-class. So type of target can determine different types of multi-learning targets. Let's look at different type of targets that are recognized by type of target. So multi-class, which has got more than two discrete values, then there is multi-class multi-output where we have more than two discrete values and we also have more than one label for example. So that becomes multi-class multi-output. Then we have multi-label indicator where we have exactly two unique values in the label column and each example gets more than one label. So we have label indicator matrix as, as the input that is multi-label indicator. And finally there is unknown where it is array-like but none of the above uh, cases hold. It could also be sequence of sequences or an array of non-sequence objects. So type of targets there are multi-class, multi-class multi-output and multi-label indicator. So let's look at the multi-class targets. So you can see that here there are more than two labels that is 0, 1 and 2 hence this is multi-class and each example is labeled exactly with uh, one of the labels. 
This is also multi class, there are three distinct values. So, these are three examples of multi class targets. When we have multi class multi output, you can see that each example has got more than one label. So, that's why this is multi output, and there are more than two distinct labels. So, that's why this is multi class multi output. Then here we have uh, again more than one, one label per sample and there are exactly uh, two labels here that is 0 and 1 and this is multi-label indicator. So apart from this there are three more types of target that can determine whether the target corresponds to regression or binary classification. Continuous, which denotes the regression target, continuous multi output, which is multi output uh, regression, and then there is binary, uh, which is for binary classification. So, all classifiers in SKLearn perform multi class classification out of the box. So, we use SKLearn.multi class module only when we want to experiment with different multi class strategy than the one that is implemented in the in the state of the in the in the state of the art SKLearn estimators. So using different multi-class strategy than the one implemented may affect the performance of the classifier in terms of either the generalization error or computational resource requirement. So what are different multi-class classification strategies implemented in SKLearn? That is one versus all or one versus stressed, abbreviated as OVR, or and one versus one, which is abbreviated as OVA. OVR is implemented by one versus stressed classifier API, whereas OVA is implemented by one versus one classifier API. So OVR fits one classifier per class. So there is a class C versus not C. Everything which is not part of class C gets the negative label and that's how the classification problem is formed. So this approach is computationally efficient and requires only k classifier. So there is one classifier required per label and the resulting model is also interpretable. We first import one versus stress classifier from sklearn.multiclass library. In one versus stress classifier, we supply estimator as an argument. So here we are using linear SVC as an estimator for one versus stress classifier. Then one versus stress classifier supports methods like fit, predict, predict probability and partial fit just like any other classifier. So one versus stress classifier also supports multi-label classification. We need to supply labels as indicator matrix of shape n comma k. So one versus one classifier is another strategy that is used in order to fit the multi-class classification problems. It fits one classifier per pair of classes. So total number of classifiers is equal to kc2. It predicts class that receives maximum votes. The tie among classes is broken by selecting the class with the highest aggregate classification confidence. We import one versus one classifier from sklearn.multiclass library. We supply the estimator as an argument in the constructor of one versus one classifier. It supports methods like fit, predict, predict probability and partial fit just like any other classifier. One versus one classifier processes subset of data at a time and hence it is useful in cases where the classifier does not scale with the data. So what is the difference between OVR and OVA strategies? OVR or one versus stress classifier fits one classifier per class. For each classifier the class is fitted against all other, all other classes. 
1 versus 1 classifier on the other hand fits 1 classifier per pair of classes. At prediction time, the class which receives the most votes is selected. Now we'll learn how to perform multi-label and multi-output classification. So let's look at how multi-output classifiers work. So strategy here is to fit one classifier per target. So here X is the input feature matrix and we fit one classifier per target and that classifier is responsible for predicting uh, that particular target. So if there are k different uh, if there are k different classes then we will be effectively training k different classifiers. The second strategy is to use classifier chain. So a multi-label model arranges binary classifiers into a chain. It's a way of combining a number of binary classifiers into a single multi-label model. So the input feature matrix X is first sent to classifier 1 and we get the output of this particular classifier and this output is also fed into the subsequent classifiers. Then this for the second classifier we get the input feature matrix as well as the output of the previous classifier and this classifier basically learns to predict the class label based on the input feature matrix and uh, input from the previous class. So this is how the classification or the classifier chain is set up. So there is some configuration that is required in order to decide what is the optimal sequence of class labels. So in multi-output classifier, we are able to estimate a series of target functions that are trained on a single predictor matrix to predict a series of responses. Whereas classifier chain is capable of exploiting correlation among targets. Multi-output classifier allows multiple target variable classification. For multi-label classification problem with k classes, k binary classifiers are assigned an integer value between 0 and k minus 1. These integers define the order of models in the chain. So in this video, we studied different types of multi-learning setups, multi-class, multi-label and multi-output. We studied type of target that determines the nature of the supplied label and whether that label is adequate for the given multi-learning setup. We studied meta-estimator for multi-class and multi-label classification problem. In multi-class classification problem, we used 1 versus traced and 1 versus 1 meta-estimators. Whereas in multi-label, we used classifier chain and multi-output meta-estimators.